Well, you may not know it yet, but the state's police academy and victim services are taking huge hits. Together, since 2009, the academy and victims' assistance have lost more than $2 million. Why? Well, that's the question lead investigator Jody Barr set out to answer, and what'd you find out? Well, Donnie, what we found is that some towns in this state are not paying their fair share when it comes to sending this money back to the state of South Carolina. The Academy and Crime Victim Services are funded by a portion of the fines and fees connected to traffic tickets and court fines across the state. But some towns in this state are keeping all the money for themselves and hurting a lot of people in the process. Tucker, back up some. Every year, the state's police academy graduates hundreds of new police officers sworn to serve and protect. Our state's academy is nationally recognized as one of the best in the nation. Officers must pass firing range tests, DUI training, and learn proper pursuit tactics. Those who fail won't wear a gun and badge. Our concern is we don't know where the floor is. And how much further will it drop? Mike Lanier handles the Academy's finances. His records show in the last five years, the Academy's lost $1 million from court fines and fees. The problem for Lanier and those charged with keeping this training going, they have no idea where that money's going. There may be a number of reasons why the money's falling off, but you really can't address it until you identify it. Will the state's police force regress as far as new recruits? if you all aren't able to sustain what you're doing now, but even losing more funding because on the front end, the funding's not being collected and sent to where it needs to be sent. They won't be as well trained. We'll, we will regress, and, and, and there's no, no getting around it. Academy Chief Hubert Harrell went to the legislature in January really to won. warn lawmakers if court fines and traffic ticket fines are not being paid back to the state, his academy may have huge cuts to make. But pinpointing the problem is turning out to be the problem. Are you any closer today to knowing what's caused this nearly 20% drop in your funding today as you knew back in January? No, none at all. I uh, have no idea. So that's when we started digging to find out who and what in this process is failing. The way it works now, if you're convicted in South Carolina, a portion of fines and fees connected to that conviction are supposed to come back here to the state house. We went to the state treasurer's office for a list of which clerk of courts in this state owe the state of South Carolina. The treasurer's office could not give us an answer right away. It took them more than two months to give us this. This is a list of who who owes the state of South Carolina? In only one case could the treasurer's office tell us exactly what a clerk of court owed. Does your office have any clue as to what they owe today? Well, I haven't looked at the records recently. When I came into office, I completely remodeled the program, and so we're, having, we're catching up. Loftus is working with the state auditor's office to make sure the state knows which town owes what. The problem for Loftus, state law doesn't give him many enforcement options to collect money from towns that owe. In this case, there are 10 towns that owe the state an estimated $1.4 million. We're going to them to figure out what, what have you done with these remittance forms? You know, where is this money? What has the treasurer's office done to contact each of these 10 to find out where the remittance forms are? And number two, where's the money? We ask a lot of questions. I don't have subpoena power, and that's a real problem. I can't make them do things they don't want to. I can't make them tell me things. Uh, and, and, and this really leads to a bigger problem in South Carolina. Uh, we don't investigate white-collar crime like people think. What the treasurer can do is withhold state funds from towns like Cottageville that owes the state more than $775,000. There are nine other towns that collectively owe $1.4 million to the state. Outside of that, it's up to the town's leadership to honestly report what it's collected off court fines and fees, then turn that over to the treasurer's office. When a municipality does not send that money to the state of South Carolina, are they, by doing so, cheating the people of South Carolina? Well, it's not a good situation. We all have to pay taxes. We all have to pay fines and fees, whether we like it or not. And so, 
you can't just pick and choose. You have to pay your fair share. You know, $400,000 is serious money where I come from. Larry Barker heads the state's Office of Victims Assistance. Barker says he's lost nearly $1 million in the past two years. That money goes to provide hospital treatment, counseling, housing, anything a crime victim would need. Lately, the office has had to rely on federal tax dollars to make up the losses from towns not paying their share. Could SOVA operate without this money? Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, it would be devastating. There's no way we could. It's the same story for the state's police academy. If the losses continue, the chief says, the academy and the state's public safety could be in trouble. It's a problem the legislature needs to fix, and fast. We were the guy hollering wolf in the middle of the night out there in the forest. You know, we said, hey, look, he's here, he's here. He's here. Now it's up to those guys, to, the, I think, to, to look and see what they can do to figure out what the problem is. I, uh, Bubba's gone, and, and we have a new, a whole new a face of law enforcement here in this state. If we have to regress, I, you know, I just, I, I just feel sorry for our state if we allow it. Well, the problem we found in this investigation is that the law places a lot of trust on these towns and counties around the state to honestly report back to the state what they've collected off of these speeding tickets and court fines, send that back to the treasurer's office so that money can then be dispersed to where it needs to go. But uh, what I could tell you from this investigation, there are some towns in the state that are not following that law, and we go to those towns coming up at 6. And so you'll show us that at 6, but right. again, this is a state code, so you would just think the treasurer's office would go and enforce it and say, you owe us this money for these mm -hmm. other things. But as Curtis Loftus says, he yeah. doesn't have the power to. That's right. You, you've got to trust these towns, to be honest. Yeah. And hope an audit finds trouble if there is, and then it's just a vicious cycle that they've got to fix. The town's answers to this issue coming up at 6. We'll be right back after this.